Hello there and thank you for joining us. You are watching Focus in the Mix with Denise Ames. We are coming to you from Los Angeles, California. Today, our special celebrity guest is rock star Eddie Money. Now, because of all your MySpacer questions and responses, we are forced to do two episodes with Mr. Money. So this will be part one of two. Also coming up on this show is going to be Feisty Piranhas, backed by popular demand. So they are both coming up, but first, it's entertainment news. Well, now here's an interesting, and I must say original way to attempt to fund a project. Remember the big bopper who lost his life with Ricky Valance and Buddy Holly in that horrible plane crash in 1959? Well, apparently the big bopper's son, who recently had his father's body exhumed to move him elsewhere, has decided to put the big bopper's coffin up for auction to raise money in order to produce a musical about the 50s rock and roller. Just when you think you've seen everything on what the kind of crazy stuff they'll sell on eBay, that one takes the cake. Anyway, Jeff Beck, Metallica, Little Anthony, and Run DMC are all among those that are going to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. The ceremony will take place October 4th in Cleveland, of course. Elvis Presley's drummer, Fontana, is among those in the Sideman category. And speaking of Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, our guest that's coming up has been performing for the mandatory 25 years and still has yet to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Why is that? Well, he's here to talk about that and so much more coming up after the commercial break is Eddie Money, so don't go away. You want to get shocked? Then shocked, relived, and the end CD DVD packages by the explosive Feisty Piranhas is a must. Recorded in their own state-of-the-art studio and winners of numerous music awards. Live performances with the Misfits, Blue Oyster Cult, Nam. Look out for their new 2009 release live in SoCal Rock and CD DVD box set. Order your hot Feisty Piranhas merch at FeistyPiranhas.com today. For over half a century, Vandom Wine and Spirits has specialized in the finest rare and hand-picked wines along with a wide variety of unique spirit. Both of their Valley locations also carry a vast array of beers, top-of-the-line cigar products, and beautiful gourmet gift baskets. Come sample wines from all over the world during Vendom's popular wine and cheese tastings and classes. Whether you're on a budget or a high-end connoisseur, Vendom has something for everyone. With two convenient locations in Toluca Lake and Studio City, it's easy to shop Vendom Wine and Spirits. When you really want Italian food, you've got to go to Colombo's Italian Steakhouse and Jazz Club, Colorado Boulevard, Eagle Rock. It's that little neighborhood place you wish was down the street from you. Casual fine dining, succulent steaks and Italian favorites, a full bar, live entertainment nightly. Plus, Colombo's offers lunch and delivery service. When you really want Italian food, you've got to go to Colombo's Italian Steakhouse and Jazz Club, Colorado Boulevard in Eagle Rock. Manja. And welcome back to Focus in the Mix with Denise Ames. We actually finally got him. Eddie Money is in the house, or should I say, in the park. In the park. It's in the beautiful park. park, isn't it? Your neighborhood is lovely, and I thank you so much for suggesting that we do this here on location, because it's much more metal than just being boring in a studio or whatever. Well, it's great because none of the kids here, they don't get here until 3.30 or 4 o'clock, so we're safe. There you go. So as long as we can conduct this interview before 3.30 or 4 o'clock, right. we're all right. All right, so... Um, I want to explain to the viewers that because I got inundated with MySpacer questions, we're going to actually be doing a two-part episode with Mr. Money here. We're going to air this one, and then the following one will be the following week. So, with that said, let's get started. Great. Right off the bat, okay, you have so many hits. Um, I told you before we started taping that in fifth grade I used to listen to, I won't tell the audience where, but... Um, <laughs> You know, used to listen to uh, Baby Hold On To Me and Two Tickets To Paradise. Right. And then after that, you've had I, I Think I'm In Love, Shaken, sure. Take Me Home Tonight. What is your favorite Eddie Money song to do and well, when, why? You th when you think about it, we had like 26 songs in the top 100. That's when Columbia Records was really, you know, a big company. Bill Graham was my manager. Uh, we were the book, same booking agent with, as uh, the boss, uh, Bruce Springsteen. So we had 26 songs in the top 100. To this day, I think my favorite songs are probably Shaken and Two Tickets to Paradise. Really? Why? Yeah. Why Shaken first? Well, Shaken is because uh, I wrote the song, actually the drummer wrote it. 
He said, I want a great, I'm going to write you a great strip beat. I didn't know what he was talking about. But I, you I called, did it? <laughs> at the time, I didn't. Okay. But it's got that really great beat to it. It's, it's a great, the lyrics are good. It's about a guy being in his girlfriend's father's car and they're knocking down the bevies. It's a, it's a fun story. Do strippers use that song? A lot of them do, yes. I've been told. Yeah. Welcome to the Jungle and Shaken. Right. Okay, and then Two Tickets to Paradise. Why is that one of your favorites? Well, Two Tickets to Paradise was actually the song that I wrote that got me my record deal. And uh, who wouldn't want Two Tickets to Paradise? I mean, really, that's what it's all about. What is Paradise for you? Uh, right here. Isn't it beautiful? Aww. Living in California, all these beautiful oak trees. Uh, you know, Paradise to me, I don't know. I hope I think I hope I get it to heaven and find out. Oh, I think you will. Now you mentioned you live in California now, but you're actually from New York. Yes, I am. And you had aspirations prior to being a musician. You were going to follow in your father's footsteps of being a police officer. Right, I was. Yeah. So what happened to that dream? And then how did you get interested in music? Because that's quite the opposite of the radar. Well, I was in a rock band in high school, and my brother was in Vietnam at the time. My father was Patrolman of the Year, if you can believe that. Oh. For he's the one that started City? all the he's the one that started all the American flags on the on the antennas on the cars way back when. Huh. He was patrolman of the year, and I went on the police department as a police trainee. So I took the same mental aptitude test and the same physical that a patrolman would take. But I was only like 19 years old, so I tell everybody I worked undercover. I was I was an undercover typist because I I got I got took typing in high school because I got thrown out of shop class. Okay, now wait a second. Who knew that Eddie Money could type? Yeah. Do you know how many words per minute? I used to do about 80 words per oh minute. Oh my gosh, my record's 78. Yeah. Golly. Okay, I don't know how knew? many I could do now, but I did a lot of, you know. I took typing in high school because I got thrown out of shop class. <laughs> okay, so typing would be the so next So they said, can thing. anybody type? So I raised my hand. And I, I had a rock band in high school, so I got to work 8 to 4 when the other cops were working around the clock. So I was working 8 to 4 doing the roll calls, which was really fantastic. And the band was doing really well. And uh, the band moved to California. So I quit the police department and came out west, you know. Hmm. And then you actually sold blue jeans in the San Francisco area? Uh, yes, I worked actually in Berkeley, California during the People's Park uh, riots back in 1969. Were you a good salesman? Yes, I was. Aww. I sold, a lot. A, good sold a lot of jeans. Did you? A good salesman and a good singer. Now, you know, you don't just sing. You also play a few instruments. We know you play the harmonica because we've I'm seen sure. you do that in plenty of music videos. But what are some of the other instruments? Uh, I play saxophone. I play a little guitar. I play B3 organ and I play piano, but if I'm playing all these instruments, I'm too busy looking at the keys. I'd rather like entertain the audience. Right. So it can't be you. I hire musicians to do all the dirty work. There you know? go. What's your favorite instrument to play? Obviously, your favorite thing would be to sing. Right. But of all the instruments that you play, what would be your favorite? Uh, actually, I think I'd say the saxophone is a lot of fun. We're getting ready to do a tour with Lou Graham from Foreigner. He used to be, and he wants me to learn a solo on Urchins, so I'm looking forward to learning oh, that. Oh, my God. Now, is Lou... That, was, is that he, was a great solo. He's going out on his own, right? Because he's not in Florida Yeah, he's anymore. going out on his own. His voice sounds great. How's it's, he doing? Because I know he was very sick. Yeah, he was sick for a while, but, uh, you know, he's... Ever since he got sick, he turned into a really nice guy. Oh, really? <laughs> there you go. Back in the day when he was really uh. big, he didn't talk to anybody, but he's a sweetheart, and uh, he's getting better, but he said his voice sounds great, so mm. it's going to be a lot of fun working him this summer. All right, so going back to kind of your roots, uh, when you were in music, uh, your early stages, you had a mentor who's a very, very famous person. He has since passed on. Right. But uh, tell us a little bit about Mr. Graham and how he helped you right. and, you know, through the, the decades of what he did for you. Because I understand he got you your record deal and he just really helped he you. He was a great guy. He was actually from New York like myself and we were struggling in a band and we did this thing called Amateur Night at Winterland, which was really a famous place to play. That's where Led Zeppelin played and the Stones and Jimi Hendrix. And, and actually, we were the best band out of all the bands. And I was the first really rock band to get to land a, a record contract with a video cassette tape. Can you believe that? Huh. And we did Merv Griffin and Mike Douglas. But Bill Graham was a great guy. He managed the Stones for a while. He helped with the Us Festival. He was a great promoter. It was tragic when he, when he lost his life in a horrible helicopter accident back in the early 90s. Now, you, all, here's a bit of trivia, you also, many people won't, probably don't know this, you played with Janis Joplin's back no, in actually, the Actually, you know what happened with Janis Joplin passed away, mm -hmm. and Big Brother and the Holding Company, which was Janis Joplin's band, auditioned a bunch of people, and they liked me the best at all the, all the people they were auditioning with, but then a singer named Nick Gravenitis, who was this old fat blues singer out of Chicago, wound up getting the gig. Mm. Broke my heart, but you know, a couple of years later I got my own deal with Bill Graham. Hmm. Okay, well, speaking of gigs, uh, you go out on tour 
still. I got five kids. I'll do anything to get out of the house. Oh, I, I thought you had to. I thought you were going to say I've got five kids. I got to pay the bills. But it's not about that. It's about you want to split. No, it's good. I, we do a lot of shows because yeah, I think that you know the public's got a short memory. You got to stay in people's faces. You know. Then we do songs that they forgot, like I'll get by. Give me one love. We do songs that uh, used to be hits, and we haven't put them in the. They're not on. Uh, you know, they're not on the oldie stations yet. So we got a lot of songs to entertain them. You know, it's easy to write a great set, set list when you got 26 songs in the top 100. You right. Know? And I I know you're also a huge draw because I uh, know somebody that went to go see you play at the Coach House in San Juan Capistrano. Right, yeah. She said you couldn't even move in the place. And I have seen a lot of people. I've seen a lot of famous right. bands from the 80s and 70s play there and it's such an odd place to be in San Juan Capistrano that people are usually lazy and don't want to drive out there but right. they'll do anything to see you right. I heard it was like sardines I was I was like whoa really we have a lot of fans on there because I've been playing down there at the coach house for about 20 years mm -hmm. so after about 20 years people that get used to seeing you down there they're making an event and they come out we we did have a good show down there Where is your favorite I'm still waiting for the swallows to come back there when did they land in San Juan Capistrano I don't know that's where the swallows were yeah 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 I'm I'm thinking October, but may, I might be way off. I had a 1 in 12 chance. Uh, where's your favorite place to play? Uh, I, I like playing L.A., and I like playing New York City. I like playing Detroit, <clears throat> San Diego. Really? <laughs> Where, what's your favorite venue in San Diego? Uh, what do we play down there? What's that big the big venue? I remember I lost my cowboy boots in that place one time. Somebody sports Arena? There. Yeah, Sports Arena. Okay. We played the Sports That's Arena back with, I think we played the Sports Arena back with Santana. Yeah. That sounds right. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, on that note, we're going to go to a quick commercial break and don't go away because I'm going to start on the MySpacer questions for Mr. Eddie Money right after the break. Want a healthier lifestyle? Feel rejuvenated, slow the aging process, and boost your immunity? Cleanse your body and become super hydrated with Canjin water. Through revolutionary technology, turn your contaminated tap water into great tasting, healthier water where vitamins and minerals absorb easily. Canjin water helps normalize blood pressure, release excess body fat, and detox with every glass you drink. Visit our website or call 310 714 3154. Change your water, change your life with Canjin water. Get that perfect shot with Barbara Porter Photography. Barbara's innate talent and friendly approach is simply the best. Actors, musicians, that special someone, and pets. Her gift certificates make an excellent gift for anyone. And don't forget those holiday photos and greeting cards, a great idea for any occasion. To view some of her incredible work, visit myspace.com, Barbara Porter Photography, or call 818-347-9472. And welcome back to Focus in the Mix with Denise Ames. I still have Eddie Money here with me, and he was Thank actually you, serenading me in the park. <laughs> you want to do a bar of what you just did? Take me home tonight. We were doing Take Me Home tonight with Ronnie Speck. She was a sweetheart. Yes. Hey, you know what? Before I get to, well, you know what? Actually, one of the MySpacer questions is about her. Oh, so that's what I'm going to start doing okay. is the MySpacer questions. Let me find. This is from Christiana Kin Kinnard in uh Oh gosh, uh, do Eden, Florida. Okay. Uh, any chance of doing another duet with Ronnie Spector? Uh, when I did my re du uh, duet with Ronnie Spector, which was a big hit, "Be My Little Baby," she was so much, she had such great stories because she was with the Beatles on their first tour. She knew John Lennon and McCartney. She just knew everybody. It was a lot of fun to be with them. Then we did the ballad "Everybody Loves Christmas," which is my Christmas song. I did that with her. She comes out every year. I would love to do another another duet with Ronnie, but. We're both in opposite directions. We don't, we don't really run into each other anymore. Where, do you know where she lives? She lives in New York City somewhere. So how about when you do a show in New York? I'll invite it down, yeah. That I mean, that would just be mesmerizing. And you know, I remember that that uh, video. She's so unique looking. I don't. I can't think of anybody else that looks like her that she looks like. I just thought she was so striking when well, I was yeah, just a young girl. She's a little thing. And she's from, Is she? She's from Spanish Harlem too. With the too. big long hair. Oh yeah, hair. She's, she was really and cool. Little girl with a big huge voice. What a great lady too. When she when she got into the Rock and Roll Frame, the first thing she did was thank me. I thought it was a real honor. Oh. Wow. Oh, you know what? I, I actually did a new segment on um, an episode not too long ago where you were inducted into New York's, uh, New York's Rock and Roll Hall yeah, of Fame because my friends Blue Oyster Cult were inducted and right. I listed on there Twisted Sister and Eddie Money were also in right, there. True. So what was what Barbara was Streisand is in there. For wow. So a, lot of, a lot of people out of the East Coast are in the, in the New York Rock and Roll were Hall Were you of able fame. to go there for the ceremony? I was working that night so I had to send them my induction speech. Oh, but that's cool. You sent a speech. I okay, did. well that counts. That counts. Okay, next question. Uh, Richard Inman from Los Angeles. Uh, 
he's actually an internet radio DJ for Artist International Independent Radio. Wow. And he wants to know, um, do you use the internet to promote yourself? Yes, I'm starting to learn a lot more about the internet, and I don't really have a MySpace yet, but uh, oh, I've, you have to make you I've been. Uh, I know that uh, Tommy Rose, the guy, a lot of guys from um, some of the bands I know have been on the internet an awful lot, so I think it's a good idea. Okay. I want to be part of the present, not part of the past. You know, mm -hmm. there you go. so well, I'm getting into the computer. I'm going to yeah. be Mr. www. Okay, so Richard also would like to know. Uh, do you think the efforts of the internet indie radio is good to get your songs heard by the general public? I've been doing a lot of internet radio in the last year and it's becoming very popular. I mean, come on, the world of the computers is here and a lot of kids listen to it all the time. I mean, if you think about internet radio, you can get any game you want if you're into football. I mean, at the same time, it's, it's incredible how much you can do on it. And I think uh, internet radio is a lot of fun and I've got a lot of friends of mine that listen to it all the time right on the regular, regular radio. Cool. All right, Linda from Glendale, California. She wants to know if you're going to do more shows here in Los Angeles. Well, I'll tell you, it's a big country, and we're popular. I really have got to find some wood to knock on, but we're very popular all over the country, which is great. Now, what about I, the world? I don't know. Well, we used to sell a lot, a lot of records in Japan and Australia and Europe, but I just never went back. You know, I stopped touring Europe and everything mm. else. Like, everybody in Europe would love to make it big over here, and I'm lucky enough to... You know, sell tickets over here. So, yeah. and so why go to Europe? Exactly, because you know? the U.S. is the one that everybody wants. I'm to afraid do good to go in. to Europe too. With all that crazy stuff going on there and bombings and everything, it's like, you know. There you go. I'd like to do a, a you know a tour over in Iraq for, or Afghanistan for the troops. Huh. That would be nice. There's too. an idea. Uh, so, where can people find your concert dates on the internet? So if they want to check to see if you're going to be in L.A. or wherever they're watching this. I think you probably go to EddieMoney.com and the calendar comes up. You know. Okay. So you can find them there, people. All right, this is from Thomas Zoltar in, uh, in Arizona. And um, he wants to know, what inspired you to write Walk on Water? Actually, Walk on Water was written by Jesse Holmes. I think they gave me some credit for it. I only wrote a couple of lines in it. But uh, the Walk on Water just reminds me of uh, the Sea of Galilee when, when Jesus was sleeping and all the apostles were like flipping out and he mm -hmm. got up and he walked on water. And I just thought it would be a pretty cool tune to tune. I don't think anybody can walk on water, but you know, the big guy upstairs. Hmm. Well, I actually have a surprise for you. Uh, Thomas is a, an artist. Wow. He saw I was interviewing you. He saw on the MySpace, our MySpace page. He did this drawing of you. Oh, fantastic. Isn't that good? Very good. So huh? I wanted to present it to you. Uh -huh. Say, thank you, Thomas. Doesn't look a lot. You know, I wish I could draw. He did a good job. He did a good job. Thank and you he, so much. And he did that at the last minute. He goes, how long do I have? I said, you got three hours. Oh. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, we should do police sketches, huh? Oh, there look, you look go. Look, I want to put any money on police sketches television. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. This is Brad. He did not give us his location, but I know he's in the U.S. somewhere. Um, did you ever decimate or trash a perfectly good hotel room? Well, I've been, you know what? I hate the trash hotel rooms because when you think about the maids cleaning up after you and stuff like that,